for most of us think of technology, you know, we've been taught the old basic practice that there is the tools. You know, you've got your computers, you've got your tech, you've got your network, you've got your security. In addition, you always need to consider your people. It's your staff, it's your users, it's the people interacting with your technology at all times. And on top of your tools and your people, you've always got to consider your process. You know, we've taught, been taught these things over and over and over again in our technology planning. Think of the tools. Think of the people. And think of the process. And think about, well, let's look at our help desk. What, what are people struggling with? Where are the requests coming from? And that can help us determine the tools the people, what, what training people need and what business processes need to change. Then we can start to maybe come up with a budget, come up with a, a schedule of training, and start documenting and making some process changes. <clears throat> we can also look at ongoing project requests. And those are usually come from departments. They'll say, hey, we need a new software, or, hey, we need a new tool, all those kind of things. So we can look at the tools, we help the people in that department and we change some processes. The other place that can come from the people think, say they come from is a strategic or an operating plan. Often those are have objectives and goals and you know those are driven by this, the, the mission or the you know the vision of the organization. And again, those can help us determine some additional tools that we need maybe some additional staff or a change in staff skills or a change in job descriptions or a change in focus of people rearranging your chart, a whole, maybe a whole new org chart. All of those things can help us and then we'll have the right tool to, to support those people and then the process change obviously is a really big one when you talk about the operating plan. This is really like a tactical level of, of, of technology planning because it's basically you're just taking a string of tactics. You're going to Figure out what inventory you have, what tech you have, what you need to replace, what tech needs to be added based on these other things. Come up with an inventory, order it, implement it. It's very tactical in nature. You're just going to think it through, come up with what you need, order it, put it into place. These other changes are much more strategic in nature. It's not just a matter of, of coming up with some numbers or coming up with a, a set of steps and implement. Usually there's some political, some change management, some uh, actual cultural changes that will have to happen inside the organization. So it's no longer about implementing a tool. Now you become your strategic technology planning. And this is where people stop. They go, oh, look, okay, we've got our strategic technology plan. We've got our, our, our technology replacement. We've got our upgrades. We've got our network plans. We've got a great set of strategic plans that are straight tied back straight to the strategic goals or meeting the needs of individual departments. But where I see all this missing is in two areas. Is what is the mission impact of your technology and what about your client needs? And when I say client needs, this can be transformed into any, any nonprofit. The people that you serve, the change you want to see, the difference you want to make, what are those what are those needs? And is your technology directly addressing those? Because what I see up here is really what all of these types of technologies end up doing is do one of three things. This helps to address staff needs, a department need, or an organizational need. You're either helping staff work more effectively, maybe helping staff do their job. Maybe you're helping a whole department use software wisely or a whole department do something differently. Or maybe you're changing a whole scale part of the organization and you're saying, oh yes, we're gonna change. This is gonna be huge and it will directly impact or actually in impact your mission. Because what you're doing is enabling the staff, enabling a department or enabling your organization to hit your mission. But when I want to think about three different levels of, of technology planning, there's the tactical replacement, strategic, it's change, change the org, change the staff, change something to better use technology to meet the mission. But are we thinking of through 
what technology can actually have a direct impact on your mission or on your client needs. Let me go through some examples of what I mean on how to direct because this is a very confusing concept to understand. So let me go through a couple uh, examples. So let's forget. Let's forget all right, so examples. So when I say tactical, let's think of, so let's take your database. The first thing you do is you pick the right tool, the right set of data to store, the steps you're going to follow. And that's very tactical nature. What tool, what platform, how do you implement it, put it on everyone's desktop. Then the strategic part comes in and go, oh, you know what? Let's, let's actually build out how we're going to actually use the data uh, to become data driven. So you, now you all of a sudden you're becoming more about turning this data into information. You're turning things you're collecting into new processes. You're rearranging people the way to work. So now you're doing uh, process optimization. And then maybe you're, so instead of a database, all of a sudden you're thinking, oh, this is really strategic. This is making a big difference. Let's move to an enterprise solution. So no, it's no longer a, uh, a database. Now, it's, now it automates your workflow. It triggers things. It becomes part of the way you work, not just a place to store information. You, you switch from you know storing and tracking history to being able to do forecasts and being able to look forward and give a vision. Well, an example here would be what if now your mission instead of tying it to help your staff or your department, now you think through, how can this data uh, be shared across other organizations with a similar mission to have bigger impact? Take what you've learned from your data and share it back. How can this, how can you uh, allow direct access? How can you learn from the past? So what I mean here is see that it's very different of, let's step back and think, what our mission? What is our mission? If our mission is to end uh, poverty or to you know, end homelessness, we could allow is other organizations that are trying to work toward that same cause to see our data, to see which niche of the population we're serving so that they don't try to duplicate that same niche or we could share the data of what's most impactful, what we're doing, and then share that back out. Or we could allow our students, the population that we're serving, direct access so that they would be able to log into the system, get a feedback loop, meaning that as they interact with our organization, as, as their history goes, they're able to go in and go, hey, what was my history? What worked? What worked for other people in my neighborhood? Who can I connect with? Who can I follow up with? How can I have a direct support or, or, um, from someone else that has followed the same situation? Another example is our website. So the first thing we do, you know, is we we look at the design, we look at the the, uh, the platform, what we're going to build it on, and we build it. And it's a tool, and that's a very tactical step. This should actually be built on a CMS. So the CMS now you allow the staff to use the website to create content easier. And because now it's a strategic part of your brand. It's a strategic part of your communication with your audience. It's not just a tool that's out there to, for people to find. It's a way for your staff to get out there and talk about what's going on. Let's take this one step further though and turn this into a mission tool. So how would you take a website and instead of enabling staff, what if your website now was a, uh, a self-serve portal? So instead of telling, allowing staff to communicate their message, all of a sudden now you flip it and you go, because th this is probably targeted at, this is donors or volunteers or uh, customers or uh, partners. Those are the type of people you're creating content for because you're trying to raise money, you're trying to raise awareness, or it's advocacy. Now you actually think about your client. You say, okay, the person I am trying to have impact on, the thing I'm trying to have an impact on, well, how can I transform my website to stop being information about my work to 
information about the cause, information about how to make a change. You know, self-serve resources like in my organization where we work on homeless, we could give them access to our hiring partners, our set of steps they can follow to get themselves job ready. We could give them information on how to be interview ready, how to write a resume, resources to connect to in Chicago where they can get um, short-term shelter and then be referred into our program. So it's, it's a third step in your in your um, growth of how you use a tool to transform it into a strategy and then you can rethink it and go, okay, how can we have this tool become a direct impact of the, the cause that we're working on? And that's where the, this mission part of technology comes in. Is you have to think through not how does it help me, not how does it help my org, not does it help your staff, but how can it have a direct impact on mission. Another example is around how you communicate and collaborate. So the first thing you might do in an organization is you might uh, create a network with some shared drives. You just have some folders, a set of folders on a network drive that people can store files, collaborate on. Maybe it's not even a physical one. Maybe you're just using Google Docs and everybody can see the same Google Docs and it's uh, all there together. The next logical step is staff say, we want to be more deliberate. We want to streamline some of our communications. So the next thing you do is you build an intranet. This allows you to you know, communicate with staff, allows departments to have their own steps, part of the website. If you pull all the HR documents, all the policies, all the practices, and you become your strategic plan, all those things start to be pooled into one place so that staff have one place to get information. But then if you think about that, expanding that, that set of communication from internal, from a sort of tool to a real collaboration internally, is how do you turn that then into an X for that? That provides resources for others to speak on your behalf. You know, that, that allows more interaction with, you know, uh, park volunteers, board advocates. So you you build a set of resources. That isn't necessarily on your website, but is a part of uh, those that are most closely connected to your organization, and you provide them tools to start to speak on your behalf, and maybe provide director interaction with our uh, with our, the staff. An example I would have here is uh, I have a technology advisory board. It's a set of volunteers uh, that are in a wide range of different technology expertise. Uh, they meet here on a regular basis, but if I was to be able to build a part of our intranet that was external facing and allow that group to be more interactive online, then I could easily then transform that information and share it back with staff and make it more integrated with staff conversation. And it becomes more of a, a, a voice for the mission. Uh, the other way, way you could really think about this is it, to really tie it to the mission. Instead of thinking of these types of audiences, actually allow the people you're serving, the clients you're serving, direct way to feedback. So now all of a sudden, instead of on your website, your, your clients, you maybe it's your alumni, maybe it's people you have served or haven't served yet, allow them to get in, ask questions, provide ideas on maybe how you should change service, provide uh, concepts provide uh, feedback in, in, in how services should be delivered to meet their needs. Maybe this could be turned into focus groups or this could be turned into to something much more meaningful to collaborate, and to provide direct feedback on how, is your mission work uh, effective or not or how it could be improved. So that's the, the, the basic concept that I wanted to portray is the difference between three types of technology planning. A tactical, which is focused on security, infrastructure, tools, that kind of stuff, the, the tech you're using versus strategic, which is how do we change our staff, how do we change our department, how do we change our policies. This is about business process, this is about project management, this is about you know governance, those kinds of, 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 of things. Operate 
more effectively. So it's efficiency effectiveness. And down here, instead of efficiency and effectiveness, is which is what we seem to always talk about, is what about real impact? So how do we now step back and go, okay, how do we use these tools, but not in a way to impact our org or staff? All of a sudden, how do we use these tools to actually have a direct impact on our mission? And the people we're trying to serve, on the cause we're trying to 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 uh, to change. Uh, so I, I, you know, I just that's my concept.